Can a change in thinking after a long time negative situation based on the theory of manifestation? So can my, can my change of thought change a long term situation? If we believe, if the theory of manifestation says basically, that which I think, so I create in the world. In Hindi, they say, jase bitard vese bahard. As is the inner world, so is the outer world. So the question says, based on that theory, can a change in thinking change an ongoing, long-term negative situation? Absolutely, of course it can. The negativity, negativity is in our minds. The universe has no no values on things. We may say, oh, wealth is good, poverty is bad, or health is good, sickness is bad, or culturally we may say, you know, in India, tragically they say, you know, fair skin is good, dark skin is bad. In America, where I'm from, they say the opposite. Tan skin is good, pale skin is not good. So uh, some, of this, some of this is cultural. But it's all, it's all values that we've placed on things. We've said this is good, that's not good, this is positive, this is negative. But the universe has no such labels. The universe has no such preferences. In nature, it's all there. Aspects of nature who stay alive for half a day. Insects that live half a day. A flower that blossoms for a few hours every 10 years. And animals who live over 100 years. There's flowers that blossom 12 months a year. There's trees that give fruit a few days a year. Some that give fruit 12 months a year. So what we have in nature is... All of it. So we're the ones in our lives, though, who place these value judgments, who say, this is good, that's bad, this is positive, that's negative. And usually, usually what it's based on is that which feels good to me. So a long-term negative situation means a long-term situation that feels bad to me. Can a change of thought change that? Of course, because we are, we are active players in our lives, in our situations. I heard a wonderful quotation that said, in every situation that doesn't feel right to you, ask yourself, what am I not giving to this situation? What am I not giving to this situation? Now, That doesn't mean, of course, that every situation is our fault. We don't live in a vacuum. We interact with other people in the world. I may have a change of thought, but if they haven't changed, then they're going to keep acting the same way they've always acted. But maybe my change of thought, maybe my change of perspective, is simply to surrender to the fact that this is an intense, you could say, a a particular type of frequency situation. I don't want to use the word negative, but maybe maybe my my change of thinking isn't going to necessarily make a negative situation positive. It's not going to make an apple an orange or make a rose a jasmine or make a rainy day a sunny day. That's what we call magical thinking that children have. And there's there's a big difference between the teaching of manifestation, 
of you create your reality and magical thinking. Magical thinking is I am the power at the center of the universe. I've got this magic wand. And it's, it's the type of thing that comes up with children a lot. A parent gets sick and dies, for example, and the child feels not just sadness and loss, but guilt. Because on some level, in their magical thinking mind, if they had acted differently, been different, they would have somehow been able to save mom or dad. So manifestation is not magical thinking. Changing my thought isn't, as I said, going to change necessarily the physical logistics of the outer situation. You cannot think away a rainy day or think an apple into an orange or think some people who are in the midst of their own karmic package, their own karmic path, and it may be a path that right now is anger, violence, abuse of themselves, of others. Taking responsibility for our thoughts, for our role, does not mean that I'm a failure until and unless I can convince people in the world around me to stop abusing, to stop being violent, to stop being alcoholics, to stop being drug addicts. Again, you see this a lot in relationships. If only I could meditate harder, be better, my loved one would stop being an alcoholic, stop being a drug addict, not be gay. Not, I mean, all of, the, all of the things that in relationships we w would like sometimes people to, to be different. If I, could, if I could think it away, do puja for it to go away, wave my magic wand for it to be different, bring them health, bring them back to life, whatever it is. That's not what manifestation means. What manifestation means is that as I think, so I create. So my reality, which is quote unquote negative because I don't want this person to be an alcoholic. I don't want this person to be a drug addict. I don't want this person to be sick. I'm in love with this man and therefore I don't want him to be gay because I want him to be in love with me. I am, whatever, whatever aspect of our relationships it may be. What I'm manifesting is my own existence. Which means that change of thought may simply be that I've changed from thinking of it as negative to thinking of it as that which is perfect because that's how the universe has created it. And it may not feel good. It may not be what I wanted if I had a magic wand. But with faith in the universe, I'm able to surrender to it as an unchangeable situation and that the only thing which is changeable is how I react to it. So, okay. We're going to eat apples instead of oranges because I can't think my apples into oranges. Okay. We're going to accept that here's what's going on with this person. Whether it's alcoholism, whether it's an addiction, whether they're being violent, whether they're being abusive, whatever it is. This is how it is. Now I have a choice. Am I going to stay in the situation or not? That I do have control over. I may not have control over that person's actions, but I have control over mine. And that's where I have free will, where I have choice. And so a change of thought in an ongoing long-term negative situation isn't going to necessarily, sometimes it absolutely can, but it isn't necessarily going to change the situation itself. If I love the sun and I hate the cold and I live in Michigan, 
right? I mean, I could, that, that's, you could consider it an ongoing, long-term negative situation for me. A change of thought is not going to make Michigan San Diego. But it's going to change my perspective of the cold, my perspective of the snow, my perspective of the rain. So that's the power that our change of thought has, is it's to bring me into alignment with that which is. Spirituality is not about changing that which is. It's about changing who is the one here that's interacting with what is. Is it someone who doesn't like it? Or is it someone who's able to accept it? That's what spirituality changes. And yes, of course, it also has an impact on the world. And yeah, sometimes a change in my thought changes the outside world. You know, one of the best examples or ways to think about it is if you and I have been holding on, let's say, to opposite ends of a rope. We've been in a tense, literally, situation for years, each of us pulling in different ways, metaphorically, of course. If I let go of my side of the rope, what happens to it? Goes slack, right? Now, he didn't have to let go of his end. He didn't have to change at all. The sheer fact of me letting go of my side has rendered this rope tensionless. It's not even 50-50. Me letting go of my side has removed 100% of the tension in that rope. It's gone. And it cannot come back unless I started to pull again. He's left with a slack rope in his hands. And so there are a lot of times in which our change actually does change the very situation. But at the bare minimum, at the bare minimum, it changes us from being negative to being accepting. And that's ultimately what it's about. We were speaking last night about sort of this, this obsession with the superficial level understanding of positive thinking. And so that's where the, the opposite of negativity is not this avoiding the negative and thinking only of the positive. The opposite of negativity is an expansion within my sense of self, within my my internal space that's able to allow the presence of the existence of more and more while I still stay grounded and centered. Doesn't mean I love it. Doesn't mean I'm jumping for joy at someone else's alcoholism or addiction or violence. But I'm able to create space for it to exist while I still am able to stay centered and grounded and at peace. And again, lastly, as I said, that space may include physically removing myself from the situation. If I'm the object of the violence, yeah, I need to remove myself. But once I've removed myself, once I've brought myself to safety, I'm not going to ruminate about it in my mind. I'm not going to keep the negativity going, oh my God, why me? I thought he was perfect. You know, he had seemed so perfect. The matchmaker said we'd be together forever. He looked so good. He said he loved me. I'm not going to ruminate on it in a way that just keeps refocusing me negatively. Because... I've created space into which the presence of the fact that I was in a relationship that turned out to be abusive that I had to get out of is able to coexist with my centering and my grounding and my peace and my joy in my life. So that's, that's what the shift brings us.